ever since Adobe announced Generative Fill AI in Photoshop Beta, the internet has been going crazy with folks showing some of the amazing things that can be done with it. But did you know you can use it to turn your own pictures into paintings or drawings? No, me neither. Okay, so all credit for this goes to Marty over at Blue Lightning TV Photoshop. So if you don't follow his channel here on YouTube, then I highly recommend you do. I've added a link in the description to his channel and also to the video he posted recently about this. So this now is what Marty has discovered and I've been experimenting with even further since watching his video. Now using this photograph here that I took with my drone of an old Victorian lighthouse in the Gower Peninsula in South Wales, if I wanted to turn this into an oil painting using Generative Fill AI in Photoshop Beta, the way I might think of approaching this is to first of all select the entire image by going to Command or Control if I'm on Mac or Windows and pressing A to select the entire image. And then typing in the Generative Fill AI text prompt, just something simple like oil painting. But you can see that it just creates an oil painting, but not of the photograph. So here's the trick. Let's just get rid of this and go back right to the start again. This time though, I'll go to the channels. Then add a new channel by clicking on the new channel icon at the bottom. Next, I'll press D on my keyboard to set the foreground and background colors in the toolbar to their default of black and white. And then I'll click on the foreground color to open the color picker. Now here we have the H, S and B, hue, saturation and brightness. The hue and saturation are both at zero. The brightness though, we want to be around 30 to 40. I'll choose 30 for now, but a different amount will give different results. Then I fill this new channel with the foreground color by either going to edit and fill and then choosing foreground color. Or holding down the command and backspace on Mac or control and delete on Windows. Now that's done, I then hold down the command key on Mac or control key on Windows and click directly on the thumbnail of this new channel to select its tone. Now when I do this, we get this warning dialog box appear, telling us that because we have tones less than 50% gray, we won't see an active selection, but it is there. We then click OK, and then click directly on the RGB full composite thumbnail to return to the normal view, and then go back to the Layers tab. Now we use the text prompt in Generative Fill AI. So I'll type in oil painting and then click on generate or just press enter or return. Then after a short while of this being sent up to the cloud, we then get three results back. And of course I can keep clicking on generate to get three more variations each time. Now seeing this got me thinking, that's oil painting, but what about other looks? What about maybe watercolor? Now I could just type in watercolor in the text prompt, but let's just run through those steps one more time. So again, I'll go to channels and add a new channel. Then go to the foreground and background color and tap on the foreground color. We can see here this is still at 30 for brightness, so we'll use that. I click OK, then click on the thumbnail of the new channel and go to Edit and Fill and then Foreground Color or just use the Command Backspace or Control Delete shortcuts. I then click on the RGB Composite thumbnail and then back to the layers and then go to the Generative Fill AI text prompt. I type in Watercolor, press Generate and then just give it a few seconds. And these are some of the results we get. But this one here was one of my favorites. 
So yeah, that looks pretty good too. But remember, this is still in beta. I also tried using pencil sketch as a text prompt, and this is one of my favorite results. I have found though that because you can't control the size of the strokes being used in the oil painting or the watercolor, or at least I haven't figured out how to yet, it doesn't work so well on pictures with a lot of small detail, like this drone shot I took of Lyme Regis Harbor. Oh, and it does tend to create some interesting results when you try it on portraits. Using the prompt pencil sketch was interesting though when I tried it on this black and white image. So lots of fun to be had experimenting with this stuff because clearly it can do more than maybe we first thought. Right, that's all for this quick video. So like I said right at the start, do make sure that you check out Marty's channel and also the video that he did on this because he does take it a step further by enhancing the look by using the filter gallery in Photoshop. But if this video has been useful, I'd really appreciate a like. And if you haven't yet, click on subscribe because as you know, that's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's me, I'm done. I'll catch you in the next video.